Hello fellow plot questers, today we got the history of Rome by Lovey, and well let's get right into it. So, basically I'm not going to go through the entirety of the history of Rome, because that takes a hell of a long time. So I'm going to talk about the beginning history of Rome, the beginning history of a country called Kukuria, one of the ancient Korean kingdoms, and we're going to talk about the, the starting stories of those two things and compare them, compare them culturally, compare them on symbolic meaning, and well let's get right into it. So, uh, let's start with Rome, because this that's the book that we're reviewing, so it's probably a good idea. Now, it's about Romulus and Remus, who are both sons of Mars. And they are brought up by wolves, and then they become kings. And they make a country, and that country is called Rome. And one day, um, they kill each other, and one of them takes the throne. And that's, that's pretty much all that happens. There, there's nothing really super special about it. And they start a line of kings, which will eventually result in Brutus, you know, destroying the line of kings because Tarquin. And then we're going to talk, and then it becomes the Caesars, you know, the Kaisars. It, it becomes the age of the Kaisars. And basically the start is just about two brothers killing each other, the one line summary. Now let's talk about the Korean starting myth of Chumong or of Kogurya. Kogurya is the name of the country, Chumong is the name of the king. Chumong is like this kid who has a lot of special talent, he has a talent with a bow, he's very very smart, very very benevolent. And basically what happens is um, he got born from an egg, and then the king, the, the country that he was born in, the king, has like a couple princes and they really don't like him, so they chase him out of the country. And he runs, and there's a river, and he asks his freaking grandfather who is the king of the sky, and his other grandfather who is the king of all seas and rivers and the river guy asks all the different creatures like turtles and fish and all that to create a bridge at the river so he can run and then when the princess tries to cross the bridge the bridge disperses the princess fall in water Chumung escapes makes a new country called Kukuria and basically we we want to look at this almost culturally right let's think about Rome okay Rome was a country of conquest. Rome was a country created because they ate all of the countries around them until it came to the point where it was enormous. As for Korea, that didn't... Well, Korea was also a country of conquest, but rather, for Korea, he kind of ran away to a different part of Korea that wasn't inhabited yet, and then created an entire, entirely new country there. And there was a little bit of conquest, like some of the tribes there, they united with Kogura and became under the Kogura rule. But there isn't a lot of history of blood for the start of Kogura. And if we compare that too, we can say that Rome is a country that was born in a more harsh environment, while Kogura was born in a, a little bit of an easier environment. Because, well, yeah. And also Kogura is a way older country than Rome. <laughs> Actually, yeah, yeah. So that happened. And basically, these two countries, they're very, very different. And maybe that's what affects the cultural nuances of, of these two starting myth stories. Because let's think about it, okay? Romulus and Remus, they're, they're the children of Mars, who is the god of war, by the way, in case you didn't know. And they're raised by wolves. Wolves are solitary creatures, hunters even. And if you're trained by wolves, or if you're brought up by wolves, you obviously live in this tough, natural environment where you only the strongest can survive. And that really shows that Rome is a country that really, really started by conquest, by fighting, and that, and that I need to survive mindset. Meanwhile, the Kokoria myth feels a little bit less gritty, but rather a little bit more holy, almost like divine help. They were meant to be the king. And that's really, really interesting. And, may, and perhaps that's why, like, like, the starting myth, right? That's all that everyone talks about a country. And Rome's starting myth is about two uh, brothers killing each other. And that's not a very good impression, right? But perhaps back then, culturally, that was actually a good impression. This king has been raised by wolves, so he's super tough and super cool in battle. He made Rome, so he's super cool. And he also killed his own brother in a, in a fight. Therefore, he's honorable, he's smart, he's intelligent, he's stronger than his brother who was also raised by wolves. And that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much shows that the king's a powerful person. 
Goda does the same thing, except in a different way. Chumung is born from an egg. An egg symbolizes a bird. The bird symbolizes the sky. Therefore, Chumung has a relation to the sky. He's as high as the sky. The king is high as the sky. Has a relation with the sky. Pretty cool. And he's also excellent with the bow. Now, you see, in medieval times, a physical prowess in battle is an absolute must. For like 90% of all of the monarchs, they're either good with the sword, the bow, or some kind of weapon. And that is no exception for Korea. However, there's not that much emphasis on the bow. There is a lot of emphasis, but less emphasis on the combat aspect than, you know, the, 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 the trying to survive in the middle of a kill pit from, and raised by wolves, you know what I mean? And so culturally, perhaps, the difference is that Kukuryo was like, okay, we need our king to sound really holy and really divine and really God-given strength. Meanwhile, Remus or, and Romulus, they wanted these two founders of Rome who later killed each other, these, this first king of Rome, they wanted that person to be powerful, solidary, they're tough, they've, they've really come out on top on the food chain, and that's perhaps what they wanted to emphasize instead of the divine God-given holiness. Like, I'm not saying the divine God-given holiness is, isn't there in the Roman myths, like, the two people are demigods, they're sons of Mars. But Mars is the god of war, and Chumong is the grandson of the god of the sky and the god of the rivers. What do you think was most important for medieval people back in the day? Rain, which comes from the sky, and water, and fish, and food, which comes from rivers, and agriculture, which is a combination of rivers and rain. Where does rain come from? The sky. So in other words, he, he, he's the grandson of the two most important deities in Korean, well, in any medieval place, really. So, therefore, they want to really amp up the he's a holy guy aspect rather than focus on the bow aspect. However, for Romulus and Remus, they wanted to focus on the they are warlike and they are powerful aspect rather than the they are the sons of Mars aspect. Pretty cool, huh? And I think that that really shows the cultural difference between Korea and Rome because they're literally, you know, Korea's here and Rome's like there. And I think that's really, really interesting. And it's a lot, it's worth talking a lot about because it's so different. Yet they both have the exact same factors, the divine intervention, the divine power, and the fighting, the physical prowess. But Rome puts an emphasis on the physical prowess and toughness while Kukuryo the Kogure's myth puts more emphasis on the specialness and the divineness. Pretty interesting, I think. And that concludes my review slash comparison slash analysis of the history of Rome's beginning and the history of Kogure's beginning. And I know, I know, I, I should, you guys want the rest of the book, but the rest of the book is really long and I don't really want to explain it. So just con be content with this, with this, um, Nice analysis. I think it's I think it's pretty interesting. And like always, your your plot coaster, Aaron the plot coaster. The history of Rome is actually really really interesting to read because it's all about you know this guy killed this country, this guy killed that country, this guy killed each other. Sextus raped his mother. Yeah, it's an actual thing. So so if you want all those interesting stories of Rome, definitely definitely read the history of Rome. It has everything. And if you if you're super curious about the Korean myth, just search up Chumong or or the Korean myth of Kogria or the ancient country of Kogria. There's only like three or there's technically been like let's say six so far in Korean history. But there is there is this time when there was three at once, and that's Kogria, Kogria Shela and Pekze. And in other words, you you just need to think about Kogria and just search it up. Yeah, there's not there's not a lot of empires anyway, so or kingdoms anyway, so you won't be that confused. So search that out if you're really interested. And well, yeah, have a good day. I hope you enjoyed. Goodbye.